On the front drive shaft for the four-wheel drive going to the transfer case, this flange here uh, has Allen bolts in it, and those are number six. We're gonna go ahead and use our Allen swivel extension and our impact to remove all of these. You can just manually grab that drive shaft and rotate that so you have access to all of these. Once this is removed, we're going to move to the forward part of the drive shaft and do the same up there. Now we're going to go ahead and use a dead blow hammer just to try and work this flange free. Rotate this unit. Now we're gonna try and compress this part of the dry shaft on itself. Now the interior cap for this dry shaft did pop off. It's in the front part of the drive shaft yoke. We're gonna use a screwdriver just to reach in there and pull that back out. With this unit, compress as much as we can get it. It does have a lot of play. We're now gonna move to the back section here and loosen that one. We're gonna go ahead and use a punch and a hammer. There is a small ridge on the inside of the uh, drive shaft unit here. We're gonna go ahead and tap on that to try and work that out. Go ahead and rotate that. And we're gonna work our way around. So now that we have that loose, we wanna go ahead and rotate this a little bit more. Now we're gonna bring it up. I'm gonna try and work the front dry shaft out. We have to use the pry bar on this side as well. Go ahead and remove this bracket right here in this three 15 millimeter bolts. There's one here. There's one right behind this wiring harness up top. And then there's one forward of that over here. So let's go ahead and use our 15 millimeter socket and ratchet. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and remove this connector off of the sensor itself. There's a pinch tab on there. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that, wiggle it, and pop that off the sensor. All right, we're gonna go up and put the pliers on here. go ahead and spin that out. Now we did spray a little bit of rust penetrant on there to help us get that out. Go ahead and install the new sensor. And we'll go ahead and snug that up. Now we're gonna go ahead and get our bracket reinstalled up top here. I'm gonna go ahead and get our lower bolt started first on that bracket. Just gonna get start a few threads and then we'll put, put in the other two. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten up these three bolts for that bracket. Now we're going to go ahead and connect the wire and harness to that sensor. Put on top, line it up. Press it down and you hear it click into place. Now upon installation of the front drive shaft, there are shorter bolts and longer bolts. The shorter ones go on the rearward side going into the transfer case. The longer bolts go into the front side going into the front differential. I'm going to bring the rearward side up. We need to adjust it so we can get the front part of the drive shaft up and in. Now, Now you want to pay attention to the placement of the bolt holes. So before you push this in, I want to make sure that we can go ahead and get a couple of the bolts started here. So we're just going to push those in. By holding that front yoke and turning the drive shaft and the bolt will slide into place. I'm going to try and catch a few threads on that. Once we have a couple of these started, we're going to go ahead and get the remainder of the bolts started on the front flange. I'm going to go ahead and just finish tightening these down. Let's move on to the rear. I'm going to go ahead and try and repeat the same process. You want to line up the flange bolt holes. I'm going to work a couple bolts into it and slowly move the drive shaft back and forth so you can feel them catching on the holes and try and get the bolt started. Now with those two bolts snugged up, we have now pulled the drive shaft into the yoke evenly. Now we're going to go to the other bolts and snug those down. Now we're going to go around and we're going to torque all of these down to 22 foot-pounds. You can see as we try to turn it, it is going to spin the drive shaft. So we're going to use a pry bar. We're just going to put it between the bolt and the flange here just to keep it from spinning. And we'll repeat this for all of the bolts. So normally we would use a pry bar for something like this. We're going to use a screwdriver at this point because it has a thinner tip on it. We can get it between the bolt and the flange to go ahead and hold that in place from keeping it from spinning while we tighten the front bolts. And that's it, we have all the bolts torqued to 22 foot-pounds. And the flanges are in evenly on both sides.